this meeting is being recorded by committee chairs. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. Seeing none, the, the purpose of this meeting is to prepare agendas for subcommittees for council consideration. No discussion or comments will be entertained unless requested upon by the committee chairs. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Councilor Gilmore. Here. Councilor Gwynn. Here. Councilor Disorder is not with us. Hold on, I have to admit two people. Um, Councilor Elmer. Here. Councilor Forgy. Here. And Councilor Ricketts. Present. Madam President, you have a quorum. Thank you. All right, first thing I have in our notes is return to in-person hybrid subcommittee meetings for council and training of hybrid meetings by committee chairs. Um, so I don't think we're going to make a change in, you know, the very last month of our year with this configuration. Um, I'm a fan of committee chairs being trained for hybrid meetings, just because in general, I think that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but unless someone has something they want to add, I'll move on. Do you, do you want it left on the agenda for future discussion? To be left for future discussion. Okay. We don't need it tonight. Okay. All right. Um, the sidewalk ordinance enforcement. Um, Councilor Desorger introduced that, and she's not here tonight. So, if there are no objections. I'm going to skip over that one. None. All right. Update on speak. governing so entity. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. The governing entity for, uh, entity for the Community Preservation Committee, um, I know this one was a bit contentious. I I don't recall seeing an update unless anyone else is, <coughs> has more information Kathy to has add to that. Kathy has her hand up. Oh, please. Um, the mayor asked a little bit ago for me and a couple others to look into how CPAs could possibly, how we could put a procedure in place. Um, I reached out to my clerk group. We got some information, but they're from towns, not cities. So we are looking, we just haven't found <clears throat> one that we could um, use, but we're, we are looking. Okay, that's good to know. So it's nothing we can really do about that this month. We're gonna let you do your research. All right. Um, all right, so this is um, Code of the City of Greenfield chapter 213. Um, Clark Scott, do you wanna talk us through this one? Yeah, there's just a couple of updates that I'd like to see if possible to the animal control ordinance. Um, cleaning up the language so that people understand that the late fee is assessed on June 1st, not on June 2nd. Um, and when people who are just moving into Greenfield need to license their dogs, just cleaning it up, no substantive changes. Just send it to a &O. Perfect. All right, consider a home rule petition for compensating reimbursement to the school's city for money spent regarding education and care of foster children submitted by Councillor Forgy. Did you want to talk to that a little bit, Councillor Forgy? Sure. Uh, it is my understanding at this point that the state has picked this up and will be compensating schools for this. I believe this home rule petition is looking for money um, you know, retro money to cover some of our costs. But at this at this particular time, I'm of the mind that there's not an urgency here. So this can wait until our January agendas. Okay, I think that's fair. All right, <clears throat> continue technical issues involving in-person Zoom hybrid meetings submitted by Councilor DeSorger. Okay, I know that she's not here, but she and I did talk about this a bit um we've had you know problems with people not being able to hear us when they're participating remotely and vice versa um 
my understanding and you know she's not here to speak for herself but my understanding is that she would like um someone from it to be present in case that happens again just because you know having public participation is so important that you know if the public feels like they can participate remotely and they try to and then they can't that's more disappointing than them just writing us off and saying that they you know camp that night because they're cooking dinner or what have you um I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if that's something where we can just declare that, you know, Fernando is going to be there all the time. I know there's a lot that happens in the background. So this is something that we should talk about. And maybe that's something that just stays in this group rather than going to a subcommittee. So I don't know if folks have any thoughts on that. Yeah, Council I just has his hand up. Um, yes. My my only thought is that we requested this originally, if you recall, you know, that for the first few meetings when we switched over, that they'd have someone there and we got a little pushback, but then they did it. Um, but it wasn't in our purview to ask them to do it because that's really from the other side. But I think we make some kind of uh, request uh, through uh, the mayor's office that until we get this straightened out again, that we need someone there. Uh, we, we had it happen again this meeting. Um, Kathy, you probably know more than all of us, but Danny was once again trying to figure out your computer so we could get people to hear us again. And then it got figured out, but I don't think we've started a meeting clean yet. Mm -hmm. So, yes, please. So I can't exactly tell you what happened um, I know one of the problems in the beginning of the meeting was that it was human error on my part. I had my laptop on mute. So I don't know if that contributed to the problems of the public hearing us even after I had taken it off of mute. Um, but that that was one of the initial problems and it was completely human error. I don't know about anything else. Um. Yeah, and to my mind, it seems like once you take yourself off of mute, it should be fine, but I'm also not an IT person. So yeah, I think that's kind of what we're getting at. Yes, Councilor Elmer? Yeah, uh, can I ask Kathy, um, as I remember, you had it off mute, but you were using a microphone to- because uh, Effective yeah. communication, which is not the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> For some right. reason, the audio was coming through my laptop, not through um, the, the stack, whatever the equipment is called, and I have no idea. Um, but it was it was not coming through how it should have, and I I don't know why. And yeah, we just stuck up. I um I texted during the meeting and said, put a microphone from yeah, next yeah. to Kathy in front of that speaker. Well. And, and it, it was just me doing what I do, knowing that we it was coming out of her, her laptop, but that's not where it's supposed to originate from. Yeah. So that was a Band-Aid, it worked. But it um, I don't know. Technically that's I would... called a, a kludge. A oh, kludge. Was that... oh, thank you. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, I'll just say we, we need the help uh, from IT. Councilor Ricketts has her hand up. Yes, please. Yes, do you think we could just ask Fernando to be there for the first 20 minutes of the meeting and then he can either go or stay? Because we usually know that quickly into it if things are going to be fine or not. I think, I think that, that was fair. Our, that was our original request that they just come for the first X amount of time, but our biggest problem is, uh, I don't think we can ask him. That's That was the original issue. Okay, so we would make a request of the mayor um, that he be available, or one of his designees, because I understand that he, he might have a life outside of work, so. <laughs> okay. Unlike some of us. All right. So I feel like we we got that one all set, right? Do we want to move on? Yep. All right. Next is laying out Verde Drive. Phase two is a public way. 
Um, so that sounds like EDC to me. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. All right, and then we have a first reading for library building and grounds maintenance account slash go to ways and means. Uh, rescind borrowing authorization for anaerobic digester. All right, I'm gonna sound like an amateur here. So when we rescind borrowing, it doesn't seem like that should go to subcommittee first. I feel like that could just go to the full council, right? Or do we want a recommendation from, yes, council 4G, please. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at all of these items and in the, in, in the interest of giving everybody a little bit of a break, I think uh, with possibly one exception, although I'm, I'm going to take that back. I think all the money issues can go right out to council floor and um, we have, I mean, our first readings are first readings. There's no action needed on that. The rescinding authorization, the conversation is better on a full council floor. Um, uh, anything to do with money, I'm looking for it to go out to full council and not have a Ways and Means meeting in December. That's my intention. No, you're right. And a first reading doesn't need to go to Ways and Means. So no, my bad. it does not. Right. Council okay. Ricketts has her hand up. Yes. Okay, yes, thank you so much for that, Council of Orgy. I was gonna ask all my colleagues that as we go through the list, that they just remember the holidays and remember that these council meetings sometimes last till midnight. So if there's anything that can just go right to council floor or that you could put off to January, I really wanna lean into that idea and <coughs> not burn everybody out during this time. So let's try to put everything right to council meeting. And then once we get that full list, hopefully we can set it up in a way that we can get some of the quick stuff in the beginning and just see how it works. But I hope we don't have to have all these meetings in December. Thank so, you. Thank you. All right. So on that note, the next one is the first reading. So we'll send that straight to full council. Um, the next one is committee vacancies. I don't know if this needs to go out to the full council or if this is just a discussion that we have here. Um, I haven't been able to get a volunteer for the mayor's task force against domestic violence. And apparently we're supposed to have one by charter, except if no one stand, you know, if, if no one steps forward, I, I don't know where that leaves us. Um, I, I feel like appointing someone in December feels sort of, I don't even know if they're gonna meet in December. Um, so I don't know if folks have any suggestions or if we just leave it vacant until someone is available. Um, kind of like it, it, the, the charter might compel us, but I mean, what do we do? I can't force anyone to join. Is it a type of committee that is, um, you may not know, but is it a committee that is definitely meeting every month? Because that may help whatever counselor may want to do that. Maybe they're not meeting. Maybe they're not getting quorums. Or it would be probably my, good to know that. My understanding is that they meet every month. And part of the problem is they meet at one in the afternoon. Oh. Um, okay. Counselor Forgy? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to suggest that we move this into January. We do have a reorganizational meeting coming up in January. Mm -hmm. And people will maybe or maybe not um, be moving around their assignments, and that might free up some time for some people. That's a good point. Okay, but if this could stay on the president's notes for January, I'd appreciate it. Um, and then it's it's unrelated, but I sent them the same email. This was about um, budget books for capital. Um, I would like us to be to at least have access to the budget books. I know it's early in the process, but I feel like for us to understand how things are moving along, just so that things don't come to us, you know, if you, you know, and not everyone has to pay attention this early, but, oh, see, and Councillor Forge is showing off. She has one and I don't. So, okay, so um, but for, for those of us who want to know ahead of time, I would like to be able to see at least electronically. Yes, Kathy. 
Oh no, uh, Councilor Ford had her hand up. Um, I, you can, I, uh, to the best of my understanding is this is available online. So um, I know that there are, there's a, you know, a green bar graph that everybody gets, but I also think that there is background information that's available online. Liz put it out there. So I don't know if it's in a shared council document or whatever. Um, that's the easiest way for everybody to get this information. Is that the full book? Uh, not really. The book is, it looks, it looks full. I've got last year's uh, stuff in it too, but it's only about, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yeah. It's about that. It's not really thick. Yeah, it's pretty okay. thin. One or two pages from, you know, for each project or, you know, DPW is a little bigger, obviously, you know, that kind of thing. But it's manageable and I think it's out there. So. Okay, great. Even better. Council Elmer has his hand up. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's useful to have a printed Thank copy. You like we had last year and the year before. Is it possible to get a printed copy? Oh, this isn't the this same is... budget book. This is the this is for a capital improvements committee. So right. Okay. I mean yeah. you can have it. You, you you can have it. There's nothing that says you can't have it, but it's for the working committee. And next week next week is when we deliberate and render a decision. I can wait. All right. All right, I'm gonna move on. Okay, so this one is, I, I want some clarity on this one. So the mayor's veto on FY23-045, um, I don't think the mayor is allowed to veto an amendment. And that makes me feel like we're just going to veto the whole amount and I don't feel that's her intention either so yes okay I didn't see who raised their head first maybe Chris I'll take a stab at it but Kathy's really a, probably a pretty good uh, expert on this if you go to the charter it does talk about the mayor's power to veto it does say she can and it does say she can veto anything including money items um so what she is actually vetoing is uh, what we voted on, which was the amendment. And she, she can veto that. That's perfectly okay. But what the council can do at this point is override that veto by two thirds vote. So we need nine votes to override the mayor's veto. All right, Councilor Gwen. Yeah, just part of clarity. If you look at this, she vetoed the order for 2,200,000. Remember, we reduced that line, but it says on here that it was that it was on our agenda. It says the veto was on order for 2,200,000 from free cash to capital stabilization. But we didn't move 2,200,000 to free cash. We moved like 300,000 or something. So I'm not sure that what part of it did she veto the whole thing, Kathy, or did she veto our amended 300,000? Because I don't know if she can amend a veto. I mean, amend a, a portion. Yeah, okay. So per the charter, the mayor cannot amend the amendment. The mayor vetoed the order. The order was voted for 2.2 .2 million. It was originally submitted for 2.5. So the council amended the order from 2.5 to 2.2. The mayor vetoed the 2.2 vote because when it gets to her, it's no longer an amendment, it's a vote. Yeah. So, so she vetoed 2,200,000 from free cash to capital stabilization. She. Okay, she did, but hold on just a minute. <laughs> um, so first of all, before I go any further, um, included on this meeting is Diane Schind Diana Schindler, who is our new finance director. 
Um, she just turned her camera on. Hi, so folks. I'm going to ask Diana that if I say anything incorrectly, please jump in. <laughs> um, so everyone, this is Diana. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, so Diana and I did have a conversation with the mayor because we wanted to clarify that she could not veto the, the amendment. She was not vetoing the amendment. She was vetoing the order as the council voted it. Um, the mayor, we, we discussed, and I feel strange talking about this without her on the call, so I I'm sorry. Um, she, there was discussion about whether she could withdraw a veto, um, but there's no precedence for that. Um, we contacted the attorney. They didn't believe there was any precedence also. Um, the, mayor, the mayor would like the $2.2 million to, she would like the council to override her veto okay. so that the $2.2 million still goes into the capital stabilization. Um, she does not want her may her veto to be upheld. She would like the council to override it. Diana, please, if I'm saying something wrong, please jump in. <laughs> no, I um, think that's correct. I think the intention there there is still an intention to put um, the original order, which was requested, the 2.5 million into uh, capital stabilization. I understand that the council amended it to be the 2.2. And when uh, the mayor, obviously, in her response, articulated why she was concerned about lowering that amount, um, but that was your vote. And so then what she did is she uh, did veto that just to signify that she's not in agreement with reducing it down to the two point right. uh, two point two. So, mm -hmm. and and then again, we did have some conversations about whether that was necessary because we do want the the two point two to transfer. So that's right. what Kathy's explaining yeah. to you now. Yeah, Before Councillor Gwynn had his hand up. Yep. Yes, please. Okay. No, go ahead, Sam. Can you still hear me, Kathy? Yes. I can't do hear you. Do you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Dan, do you hear me? Now you're back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I recognize you. So go ahead. Um, I'm a bit confused. So the original order was for $2.5 million. Correct. We amended that by 300 and approved 2.2 to go where the mayor wanted it, less Correct. 300. She vetoed us because she didn't like the idea that we amended it, but she screwed herself because now she's vetoed the entire 2.2 million. Correct. Mm -hmm. so if we don't overturn her veto, she's not going to have enough money to put into capital stabilization. She's not going to have she's, she's, any money to go into capital stabilization. Because she, she vetoed us. Which mm -hmm. shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have been vetoed. She could object to the three hundred thousand, but you don't veto our, you don't veto your two point two million. You say I really don't like this three hundred thousand dollars. If we don't overturn this veto, it's a it's a problem. Okay. Um, so can we just explain this on council floor? It doesn't even sound difficult now that we know what the mayor did and she shouldn't have done it. It's fine. So let's not I talk think about it's fine. it. I don't think it's fine. Well, I think yeah, it's fine. I think because, that it was. I think it was, that it was confusing. It been done, but it wasn't like we were going. We were going to not let it happen anyway. So okay. So I think that the more. assumption. I think that the assumption here, though, is that when the mayor makes a veto, this is not a shoot from the hip. You know. Right. knee-jerk reaction i mean think i think what we're expecting here is that this is going to be carefully thought out and it's going to be a decision that is made very reasonably and rationally and that's why i was looking for clarity because i thought maybe i was misunderstanding mm -hmm. what the intention was here so i think Good that point. counselor Gwyn is right to question like what kind of position are we putting ourselves in i think that we've seen on the council that sometimes people are a little shy about overriding a veto so 
that's yeah. something we really yeah. need to really look at hard. Mm -hmm. Yes, Councilor Forgey. Thank you. <clears throat> this might be for Diana. I don't know. Uh, if we do not override or, yeah, if we do not override this veto, then that $2.2 million goes to free cash. Is that correct? That's correct. It's just it still stays in free cash. That's where it is Thank now. You. You've had no effective vote to move any money at this time um, under this, you know, because of this. So it's just still in free cash. Okay. And my follow-up question to that is that, is it nine months before she can bring that question back? That item back, Kathy. I see. In substance, do you know? I don't form. know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, in substitu substantively the same form. So her proposal was 2.5. She could change the amount, and it would not be the same form. Thank you. All right. So yes, Councilor Elmer. I may have missed this, but uh, she wants to go. She wants the three hundred thousand back. Did she have a mechanism for doing that? I would say. I mean, Kathy, if you have more information, so if the mayor chose to, she could propose another financial measure. Um, I don't have any new financial measure for the council to consider, so that would be speculation. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's where, you know, I was looking for some clarity. I, but now that I've heard from all of my colleagues, I feel comfortable. We'll put this on full council. We're going to have a discussion there, probably a lively one, <laughs> knowing this group. Yeah. All right. Um, appointments and reappointments. Um, so that's going to go to ANO. And Dan, I know you wanted to talk a little about this. Oh, and uh, Clerk Scott. So um, just confirming that this is the veto is going straight to the council floor because there's no ways and means. Yes, please. Yes. Thank you. Um, appointments and reappointments. Obviously, um, we have to do at an ANO meeting in December if we're going to do them. The only thing is I will contact the clerk's office I want some of these names separated out and not being put in a group because I've had some um, inquiries on some of the um, uh, affirmations that uh, need to be taken up separately. So I'll talk to the clerk's office. So yes, these will go on the agenda, but not exactly like they're listed, if that makes sense. Just perfect. perfect. All right, next we have another first reading and this is for dredging. So that'll go straight to council floor. Mm -hmm. Authorization for an increase in cost of living adjustment um, for FY23. Uh, Councilor Forge, you have your hand up? Yes, uh, I want this to go right to council floor. Um, for two reasons. I think it's important for the full council to hear that this is for retirees and the rationale behind this. And second, because I can't participate because I am a retiree. Fair enough. All right, that'll go to the council floor. All right. Um, MGL Chapter 41, Officers and Employees of Cities, Towns, and Districts, uh, Office Hour. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this about uh, voter registration? Yes. Would you please explain that to folks? So this is a mass general law that I'd like to propose that the council accept. If the council does accept it, it will affect local elections only for the last day to register to vote, it would then, the last day to register to vote would be on a Friday rather than on a Saturday, which would save the city some money because they wouldn't be paying employees overtime to sit in the office um, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. getting paid overtime. And frankly, we might get maybe one voter on that day. Um, so it would save the city money for overtime, 
but it was also it would also save um, myself and my staff a couple of hours work during a very busy time in our lives. Great. Great. Yes, Councilor Glenn. Move this to full council agenda. Perfect. I agree. Thank you. All right. Amend code. This one is the stipend for school. Okay. Is this the travel stipend? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you want to um, explain this one a little bit too? Sure. Um, so in this day and age to attend a conference, the council in their ordinance can be refunded for 5000 5, Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? $500. Um, but to attend a conference, stay at a hotel, travel, meals, it's, it's over $500. Um, so I would like to, the language is in the packet, I would like to separate it out so that mileage would be reimbursed separately so that a counselor could be closer reimbursed to the amount that they're actually spending out um, because they, you know, if everything is included in that one $500 bundle, they're not gonna get mileage and they're not gonna get meals. Um, if we separate out mileage, at least they would get the mileage. Someone also suggested maybe increasing the amount, but we can't increase the amount for this fiscal year uh, because it's already budgeted for. So maybe that would need to be a separate discussion. So this sounds like a and L to me. Do you want to take um, this on now or do we want to wait till January? Um, why don't we put this in January, Kathy? Is that okay? Will that yeah. cause, I mean, I don't think it's a big deal, but um, with the separate, all we're asking to do is separate the uh, mileage from the stipend in Correct. language that'll do that. Do we That's have the link? Is, I, I'm sorry, I have not seen yeah. it. Is the language there? Um, I propose language. Okay. And it is in the committee chair's packet okay um so, so the, the yeah, new so do you want me to read the new language no um okay. i know i just want to make sure where we are with this i'm seeing if it uh if i'm gonna have an a and o meeting which I, it, I we didn't have one in november so i really should have one in december um i think we can put this on my agenda for december Okay. The, the language is submitted. I don't think it's that big and that'll get it going. So let's put it on in December. Okay. That was my only, I was just saying if it was just a proposal, then we need some more time, but it sounds like it's going to be fairly straightforward. I, I tweak the language a little bit. Okay. Hoping you like it. Thank you. Before you I go on the president's notes, um, president Gilmore, I do have one more thing. That was it was received it was submitted by the mayor's office received after the five-day rule there is an order to propose that the council vote to accept an easement for electrical services at 402 and 412 main street the new greenfield public library so the email was sent out with all this information i believe it was sent out on friday to you all um the mayor would appreciate it if the council would take this up at the December meeting. Uh, there is some time sensitivity to the item. And it is- Yeah, I think that that's fine. Accepting an easement. Yeah, that can go to full council in December, but you know, it would be nice, especially with things that are time sensitive. You know, I mean, if it's time sensitive, it should be on our agenda. But so we'll let it, yeah, yeah, we'll let it go um, on December. The the explanation was that they had just received it from some people that had to uh, do some work on behalf of it. That's why it was submitted after the five day rule. Okay. All right, and that is it for president's notes. Um, EDC, Phil, I don't know. Are you planning on meeting in December? Yeah, um, I, um, this is my screw up. Uh, there, was, there was some confusion about whether the, the uh, public hearing was gonna be on Zoom or in person. 
and I should have clarified that. I should have told everybody um, at the at the city council. Anyway, so with with the uh, clerk's permission, uh, I'm gonna uh, my plan, and, and with your permission, I was gonna open up uh, sort of a Zoom public hearing so that people could uh, say their piece about the rezoning of French King. Um, and uh, and so we can have an open discussion. My hope was that we would get all the thoughts about it out there so we could deal with them. And, and because there were very few people at the open meeting, uh, it didn't happen. So that's my plan with that. Uh, the um, the marijuana thing has been has passed both uh, planning board and EDC. I'm not sure how much more we have to say about that at the meeting. And now we have this new uh, new agenda item uh which we'll put on there uh the and we'll and i hope we'll we'll keep the uh parking thing as a discussion item uh marlo's plan is to have some hearings in january uh and uh we may be invited to that it might make sense to have our own meeting anyway we, we want to talk this through uh and it's we're getting close okay Yes, I have a question about that, though. Um, so if there was a public hearing at the in-person meeting, was the public hearing closed? And if it was, can we have a second public hearing? Well, it, it was closed. Uh, and this is this is sort of an informal public hearing. Um, uh, it, it's an, we, what I'm asking is, can we make an exception in this case? because it's an important topic and people didn't get to either hear or say their piece. No, it is. It's very important. Um, and Clerk Scott, is there any bit, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't want to get the city in hot water. Is there any reason why we couldn't do that? So the way I'm viewing this and please correct me if I'm wrong is there was a public hearing technically through chapter 48, the community, the council, the, Greenfield has fulfilled their requirements. The chairperson of this committee is allowing, as they are allowed, um, to have public comment at a separate meeting on a given topic. And that's to me uh, what Councillor Elmer is asking for. He's not holding a second public hearing. He's simply allowing public comment at a, uh, a virtual meeting on a specific topic. So this wouldn't be part of the public hearing. He's simply allowing public comment on this topic at a virtual meeting. Okay, okay. I think that's great. Uh, Councilor Ricketts? Oh, yes, well, to make sure we get as many people as possible, um, I don't know if it's time sensitive or you can do it in January so you know people will come because in December, it's harder because of the holiday and stuff. Well, it's if December. We have, if we have to have the vote sooner than later, then you could do it now, but. Um, I don't have my calendar in front of me. I don't know when we run into the, um, when we turn into pumpkins on this thing, we have to have a vote within a certain number of days of its proposal. Uh, Kathy, you probably don't have that. I don't have mine either, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, I think we're 21 uh, days, right? Anyway, we're talking about December 13th. It's uh, there's still some weeks ahead of Christmas. I, I'd like to get this done, mm -hmm. and I, you know, and I'm not sure how many times we can drag out poor Stephen Capshaw, who we put through, who we uh, mm -hmm. who went through the ringer at the last meeting. Um, I, I hope we can get him to the full council when it really matters. Okay, so we're, it's not a public hearing, but we're going to say that there's public comment on this topic at EDC, and then we're good, right? Right, that's my plan. Wonderful. One question on that. Yes, yep. please. How are we going to notify the public if it's not a public um, hearing? Well, I think the way that it's listed on the agenda and on the website should suffice. I mean, people are going to be confused. I think people already kind of confused the two. Um, but as far as, you know, following the state law, 
we can only do what we can do. Right. I just didn't know if there's a, an outreach thought because, uh, you know, I agree that this is a good idea, but I just want to make it's if no one attends again because no one knows it's happening, then we, we haven't gained. We've only repeated something that didn't work the first time. Right. Yes, Kathy. Um, perhaps, and I don't, I don't want to put Councillor Irma on the spot, but if you know someone at the recorder that might be willing to do a, a short story stating that the EDC would allow public comment on this topic at your next meeting, not to be, you know, confused or thought of as a public hearing, but be specific about public comment. That could be one option. Councilor Quinn has his hand up. Yes, go ahead, Sam. I think it's a great idea, Kathy. Um, my recommendation would be um, Councilor Elmer to put forward a press release that oh. outlines what you're going to be doing. Um, send that. that press release to the recorder and to the radio stations and to Franklin County now, and that will get picked up and run as a lead story when you discuss that it's an open discussion on this major event and this is when it's happening and it's via Zoom or whatever. I think do a press release uh, and send it out and they, I'm, I, I guarantee it'll be picked up by the news sources within the county. I can do that. I bet, okay. Yeah, I bet the radios will do it. They but, will. Um, I know so somebody at the said, radio that could push it. Yeah. yeah. So, so maybe um, as I'm a just disclaimer. Saying that makes sense. Yeah, and maybe as a disclaimer, if if you mention that this isn't going to be part of the written record associated with the public hearing, so people understand. I don't know how many people go back and check, but if someone does check, I wouldn't want them to think that we are trying to squash their comments. It'll just be public record in the EDC meeting, which in the, mean, in the minutes. Yeah. yeah. Councilor yeah. Elmer has his hand up. Oh, Dan, yes, go ahead. What was the third? Uh, uh, Franklin County Now, which is the online version of the radio stations, they have their own news director. So. Is that you? Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, um, it's uh, Kennedy. Um, she takes care of the news on the radio. But I can get you that information. But and it can go out to any. If you do a press release, it can go to any news source, and you don't know where it'll be picked up. But but the more ears and more eyes that see it, the better we're off. Okay. All righty. All right. So you know, uh, sounds like you are meeting in December. Yeah, I have one issue, Kathy. The things that we didn't do in November aren't on here. We had agenda items in November for changing codes. They're not we will add them. Okay. That's the only reason I need them because the codes, we put them off because we didn't meet in November because of the uh, election and um, and the catastrophe of no- The, the um, COVID no situation. Yeah. Um, so I need, I think there's three items that should appear on here that were left off in November. I. I agree that there's at least two okay yes <laughs> so i'd like to see those appear Great. on this agenda and then yeah. um obviously if we feel the meeting's running too long we won't do all three but they should be on the agenda okay including the dog one that uh we mentioned and then um the mayor's appointments as here except i want i'll talk to you about uh, separating them yeah and discussion on rules of procedure, it can still appear as a discussion. That's fine. Perfect. I just want to let you know that um, I'm not on this committee, but sometimes I've had to fill in for a quorum. I won't be available that night. So if you don't have a quorum, I won't be able to help. Okay. And All right. Um, I'll check with Kathy and Tammy and make sure we're there. All right, thank you. Um, so Siri is canceled. Oh, I'm sorry, Marlo. Yeah, nice sorry, beard, uh, by the way. Hope, hope I'm, yeah, thanks. Hope I'm not out of line. I think there's five items for the code that were passed over. I think they're in further down in the agenda. I forgot what the other two were because three are mine, but I think there's five, uh, Councillor Quinn. Okay, and they're on the regular 
I see they're on the regular draft for the city council meeting, but they haven't gone to um, A and O yet. Right. They just weren't listed under A and O as, as Kathy had stated. She was going to pop yeah. them in, but there's five, not three. I've got a note here. Thank, Thank you, you, and I'll, I'll see you at A and O. <laughs> see you then. All right. Next, I have CRE, which is already canceled, right? Yes. We're keeping it. All right. Um, and then ways and means. Chris, you wanted to cancel this month. Give your committee yes, a little I break. Do. Yes, I do. I think it's. Yeah. I think it, we can handle it on council floor. Good. Thank you. Perfect. Great. Um, Kathy, did you have a report for us tonight? Um, no. I mean, the election went wonderfully. We're preparing for next year. We're working on census and dog licenses and tags. And uh, hopefully by the end of December, I will have a 2023 election calendar ready. Um, we don't we don't rest. No rest for the wicked. Um, so you know we we have a lot of things that we're planning for for 2023. All right. Could be worse. You could be in Georgia. <laughs> oh, those oh, poor souls. Oh gosh, I bet. Yes, yeah. yeah. Good news. Man. All right. So looking at the drafts, the mayor's veto will come up first. That's good because we're gonna have to talk about that one. We're sending the borrowing. Free purpose. Um I think everything looks good in the order that it's in. Mm -hmm. Um, but the mayor's appointments will have to be broken out. Yeah. So that when we, we always okay, apparently a leaf fell. Either. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's a squirrel. <laughs> yeah. All right. So mayor's appointments are going to have to be broken out, um, so that we can follow the guidance from Anno. Oh, that's good. We always did it broken up before anyway. So I like it that way. Yeah. It's good. Okay. So this all looks good to me, unless anybody has any um, anything they want to point out. No. And then our first reading's at the end. Okay. All right. This looks good to me. Um, does anybody else have anything before we head out? No. All right. Well, um, enjoy your dinner. Have a great night. Um, okay. And I'll see you in two weeks. Do we, would you like to ask for a motion to adjourn? Yes, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Yeah, second, first, second. Third. All right, great. Have a great night, folks. I'll see you soon. All favor. Good night. Thank you. 48 p.m.